guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodle. Welcome back to my channel. So we're here for another one of our mass making sessions and what I thought we could do is mass make some of those um, ribbon and lace. Now, I never know how to pronounce this. I'm going to pronounce it wrong again because I can't pronounce it properly. They are spelt Jabot, J-A-B-O-T. <laughs> Lots of people have told me in the past how they are pronounced and it's more like Jabo. Um, but yeah, I can't, I'm afraid, pronounce it properly. So yes, I do apologise for that. But um, what we are basically going to make is some of these. So let's get having a look at what you're going to need to bring along. So I've brought along a whole bunch of different ribbons. Now, it's got to be said that the ribbons that tend to work best are these ones. Well, not necessarily these satin ones, but, you know, the ones that are sort of about half an inch or just over half an inch thick. Um, this you may find is too thin. This is that sort of mm, like just over a quarter of an inch. And any thicker you may find is too thick. So ideally you're looking at, yeah, it's, it's like half an inch to three quarters of an inch. It's, yeah sort of half an inch thick really um so you're going to need a bunch of ribbon and then you're going to need some lace to kind of put as the you know the lace collar type piece and then you're going to need some sort of gems or you know something pretty to kind of top it off with so again i have actually bought some recently from ebay so i just searched faux gems and yeah i mean obviously i've got these ones in turquoise which i mean i'm not quite sure what possessed me to order loads in turquoise but Sometimes I think I muck up the ordering, you know, and I've ordered the wrong thing. Um, this is more like it, however, because if these are, you know, um, multicoloured, which, you know, look at some of these very, very, very pretty colours on here. So, yeah, definitely, you know, I'm not sure what I was thinking with the turquoise, but, you know, the others are scrumptious. Um, and then at the same time, I also ordered these on eBay. So, like I say, you just search faux gems, faux gems, um, or faux flat back gems. That would also bring them up, and you will get things like this come up. You could search faux pearl flat back gems, things like that, and then you can obviously, you know, find them all on eBay. So, and most of these, I'm thinking, came from China. So they were pretty cheap. I just had to wait, um, you know, a couple of weeks for them to arrive. I mean, I have to say they arrive pretty quick, even though they're from China. You know, you don't have to wait like ages and ages. So I've got those. And then the other thing that I've got is recently I went in my local Primark, which is like a very cheap, cheap, cheap shop here. And they were selling off these headbands with the gemstones. And they were half price. So they were two pounds. And they're covered in these little gems and they are just like hot glued on here oh no i'm not going to be able to peel it off ah normally these just ping off you know even if you don't want them to so they're just hot glued on and obviously you know you can peel the glue off i mean to be honest they normally come off without the hot glue being stuck to the gem this is just you know typical because i'm doing a video but i bought um i think like four of these or something because i thought well actually that's quite an efficient way to buy those gems um you know because you got quite a lot on here. I can't remember how many, but I did count it at the time. And yeah, quite a lot on there for that two pounds. So, you know, it was quite a good way to buy some. And I liked the colors on these. So, you know, it's always worth keeping your eye out in, um, you know, shops like that, or, you know, I don't know, Claire's accessories or anywhere that sells jewelry really, for if they've got some cheap with some gems and things that you think you might be able to use in your crafting. Right, okay, so I've peeled those off. So all we're going to do first of all, and I will probably um, show you, I was going to show, say show you one completely through, but actually I think we'll just do the entire process, you know, as a mass make, if that makes sense. So what you're going to want to do, if you saw my video before, you'll already know how to make these. We want to make three sections like that, like a sort of faux bow. Yeah, like a faux bow. So we want to get three lengths of the lace, like that, and like that. That's how I find easiest to cut your ribbon down. Sorry, lace was wrong word, I meant ribbon. So you're going to want to cut it like that, and then you're going to just cut it down like that, okay? 
So, and again, I might just do all of my ribbons so we're really like an assembly line straight away. Like that. So, I mean, I'm just kind of folding them over so I know roughly how big they're going to be so as I don't cut it completely the wrong size. So again, sort of roughly there and we just then fold that over and again like that okay cut that down down there and then here through the top okay so that's two so and obviously I've got this tiny little scrap of ribbon now which um yeah it's pretty useless but you know we'll just hang on to it anyway because that's what we do as crafters isn't it we just hoard everything okay right so let's have some pink pretty pink one and we're going to just again make sure we're doing it roughly the right size and then we're just going to cut our ribbon down you know so we've got three lengths basically you know similar size or the same the same size okay okie dokie like that so I move these to one side I'll do kind of like one of each color first and then um, you know I might do a couple more of the same color if that makes sense so yeah so I hope everyone's having a nice day hope you're all um, you know doing well and that your weeks all started out well it's so sweltering here I can't tell you we suddenly had a heat wave and I'm not complaining because, you know, we've been waiting for ages for the weather to brighten up. We had that brief spell of kind of nice weather and then it just seemed to disappear to nowhere. And um, yeah, this weekend it decided to suddenly come back. I, th uh, I say this weekend, I think it maybe started on like Thursday or something. So I think it's, yeah, been nice since Thursday. Oh my goodness me, it is so hot so hot i mean actually i just um had to nip out and give a friend a lift and um to you know to drop their car somewhere and it was 25 degrees tw well 25 and a half actually 25 and a half degrees in the car the um temperature thing said so i mean that's pretty hot isn't it and um yeah it's like really boiling up here in the loft i have to say so uh yeah i'm sweltering literally sweltering so i'm probably literally waffling on now about all sorts of rubbish kind of gone into a a hot stupor can't focus at all on what i'm even talking about now because i'm so hot okay but yeah i hope everybody's week started out well if you're in the uk i hope you're enjoying the nice weather <laughs> you're probably not moaning about it quite as much as i am but um yeah i mean i'm not really moaning it is you know wow like lovely to see the sunshine finally but we just seem to always have that one extreme to the other we have like none and then just suddenly it's like tropical temperatures so i'm not saying 25 and a half is tropical but i mean to me it feels quite tropical you know because i mean a couple of weeks ago it was only like 10 so uh yeah it feels quite tropical okay and we will do one in this gorgeous plum color yeah, so I hope that everybody had a nice weekend and, um, you know, if you are in the UK, I hope you enjoyed the sunshine. Was it hot where you were? Right, here we've got kind of a bit of a situation where we haven't really got enough to actually make one out of one colour. So what I might do is try and mix the colours. I'm going to just hope for the best that this is not going to look really, really, really horrible. Yeah, so we'll just try it. Yeah, we didn't go down the beach or anything. Oh, that was what I meant to tell you. I've only just remembered. Like I said, I've gone into this drunk stupor, drunk on, on sunshine, on heat. Um, yeah, so on Saturday, I don't know whether I mentioned this at the time, but when my eldest son, it was his 18th birthday um, on New Year's Eve, and, you know, that was obviously during the lockdown. So it was a bit of a shame because obviously, you know, he wasn't really able to kind of celebrate properly. But what he wanted was he wanted an experience for his birthday rather than, you know, a present, as it were. Um, so he got a skydive 
um, yeah, a, a tandem skydive. So, you know, like where you would jump out of a plane attached to somebody. Um, I think at 10,000 feet. Yeah, I think at 10,000 feet. And what happens is they do like a 30 second free fall before, you know, pulling the parachute chute, um, you know, and opening the parachute up. Anyway, so it was his um, parachute, you know, um, trip on Saturday. So, uh, yeah, it was very exciting. So that was in, um, it was in a place called Salisbury, which if you live in the UK or, you know, maybe even if you don't, maybe you've heard of Stonehenge. It's where Stonehenge is. Um, and yeah, so had to drive over there. Um, you were only allowed two people to go. So he chose for his girlfriend and me to go. My middle son was actually at work anyway, so he wouldn't have been able to go, which was a shame. Um, but having said that, um, you know, it was nice that obviously his girlfriend could go, you know, could go. Um, you know, yeah, that was, that was, I guess, nice for him. But it was a shame that only two people could go. My daughter was also able to go because they didn't class children, you know, in the two people, if you see what I mean. So she was also able to come. Um, but yeah, technically it was kind of only two people, which was a shame, but yeah, so we went, um, to the skydive. Now, I mean, I have to say, other than the point where he was actually doing his skydive, I mean, obviously I realized it would be like this. It was kind of quite boring because I mean, of course he had to kind of like have his safety brief in. Then there was lots of waiting around. Then he went and put his gear on, you know, ready for his jump. Then there was more waiting around. So it was, yeah, just a day of lots of waiting around, really. And like I say, I mean, I kind of suspected it was going to be like that anyway. Um, but obviously, I hadn't really factored in the weather. So, yeah, it was so hot because the, you know, the um, it was in an airfield or on, on an airfield. So, of course, you know, we were outside, which was great, you know, in one way, I suppose. But my gosh, it was so hot. Right, I'm just going to quickly talk you through what we've done. So hopefully you kind of caught that. What we did, and I'll, I'll do three more and show you so that I can talk you through this. We are gluing down basically like in half like that. So all I do is kind of blob a bit of glue there. Now I use my hot glue for this because it's very instant. You could do this by stitching. And you could do this using, like, say, Fabri-Tac, if you prefer, if you don't have a hot glue gun. Um, personally, I like the hot glue because it's very, very, very fast. Um, you know, stitching, that for me would be, like, well, slow beyond belief. Um, and Fabri-Tac, you know, you're going to have to wait for that to dry, really. So, again, not necessarily, you know, an ideal kind of solution. Um, but, yeah... The hot glue is, you know, just wonderful for things like this, to be honest. So, like that. And then what you've got is kind of this, this like bow type shape thing going on. And you want to do that, obviously, with all three of your pieces. Okay? So, again, just a little bit of glue there. Dab it in. And then just like that. Okay? Now, once you've got your three pieces, so I'll talk you through the whole of this one now before I kind of move on to do some of the others. So you've got your three pieces and then what you're going to do is you're going to layer them up like this. Okay, so I'm going to just glue this top piece onto this piece. And you want to make them so that they've got a little bit of a gap here so that you can then have like a third piece oops can't I can't actually see now which is the right way and which is the wrong way so I think that's the right way okay so you want to have a little bit of gap so you can have your third piece going across like filling this gap if that makes sense so like that and actually I'm just thinking it doesn't look too bad with just two so where I had only two bits of ribbon for that um you know, aubergine spotty coloured one. I might be able to just get away with just the two pieces. I'm not sure. Right, so that's that. Now what you want to do is you want to make this into sort of, 
you know, effectively like a vintage collar. So I'm going to just take a bit of lace and you just want to kind of like fold your lace in, making a bit of a collar like that. Okay. Just keep your eye on like how big you want it to be. Like that. Okay. Yep. And then I'm just going to trim this down here at the side. Like that. Oops. And I might have to just come in here slightly. Okay. And then you're going to glue your, you know, ribbony type bow over the top of the lace. Now, this ribbon here, you know, I love it. It's, you know, really, really, really pretty. However, it looks very new. So I'm just going to kind of like vintage it up by just inking it a bit with the walnut stain. Like that. Okay. Just so it looks a little bit more vintage. And I will do kind of hopefully all around it like that. So it's, you know, hopefully getting into those insides of the ribbons. So like that. Okay. And we're going to glue all of that now onto the lace piece like that. Okay. And then you just want to finish it off. Now you can finish it off with anything you, you, you know, that you choose. Um, I think a gem looks really super pretty. I'm not saying necessarily that one. I mean, I should try out these turquoise as I've got tons of them, but again, I mean, they're a little bit on the bright side, but that's quite nice. Let's just try a few. Oh, that's quite pretty, isn't it? Yeah, I'm quite liking that. So obviously this is the one I've pulled off of that headband. Um, I mean, to be honest, I don't think I really even need to pick that glue off because it's going to glue onto that bow, you know, like that. Okay. And that's it. That's your little, um, as I say, I can't really pronounce it, but jabot or that's not how you pronounce it, but, you know, whatever you pronounce it as, that's it there. So it looks, sorry for um, knocking the table. Let me zoom in slightly because, um, yeah, it might be better for you to sort of see it closer up for the next one. But aren't they gorgeous? So I'm going to put that to one side. And then I'm going to do sort of a bit more of a mass make, I think, in the style of the next lot. So that we kind of get them all like assembly line style where we do all the same stages at the same stage, if that makes sense. So yeah, back in like that. Okay. Yeah. So um, back to kind of my son's skydive. So uh, <clears throat> he was yeah doing. I think it was. Um, I, I'm sure he said it was ten thousand feet. And what that basically meant was you free fall for like thirty seconds before the you know person you're jumping with pulls the chute. Um, and we did that. Well, partly for cost, because it was quite significantly more if you had a one minute free fall. Um, and we talked about it and kind of said, well, you know, one minute that could end up feeling like absolutely ages, couldn't it? If you were like, you know, free falling for one minute. I mean, to me, I felt like, well, that would feel endless. You'd be like, oh, my gosh, are they ever going to pull that shoot? Um, anyway, he did it and... Um, he absolutely loved it. I mean, I have to say, I take my hat off to him. He didn't really feel nervous um, until like literally like 10 minutes before, which, you know, was amazing. I mean, I'd have been feeling nervous for like probably a whole week before, to be honest. Um, oops. And yeah, he uh, loved it. Absolutely loved it. He came down and, you know, his girlfriend and my daughter and I, we were obviously all watching. <laughs> And it's quite funny because obviously what happens is they have like, say, like a group of five people who are all jumping out of the same plane, you know, on the same ride, if you see what I mean, the same journey. Um, and obviously, you know, they're 
way up in the sky so you can't really see who your actual person is you know because all the um you know parachute shoots they're all the same color they were all blue and white stripy so we couldn't tell which one was my son and which one wasn't i mean luckily he had thought and he wore some like you know cargo kind of trousers in a kind of you know cargo-y color like you know sort of beigey type color i suppose and he'd worn a white t-shirt so the only saving grace was obviously most people had jeans on you weren't allowed to wear shorts or anything so you had to wear you know long something covering your legs up um but the only saving grace was yeah most people had obviously worn jeans you know blue so we were able to kind of look out for you know could we see anyone with like lighter colored bottoms and a lighter top um so that was kind of good thinking really on his part because yeah we would have really struggled to kind of make him out otherwise even that being the case there was another lady um who happened to have a white top on as well and um she did have jeans on but of course you know when you're looking up and the sun's in your eyes and what have you and you're trying to film it on your phone you really can't see to be honest so yeah i filmed her obviously coming down you know thinking it was my son and it wasn't until she literally landed and finally got to the ground that i kind of said to my son's girlfriend oh that that wasn't him i've filmed the wrong person luckily he was still up <laughs> so it wasn't like i filmed her instead of him i filmed her as well as him um but yeah i mean it was kind of hard to hard to see from that distance who was who obviously but yeah i mean definitely you know if you know anyone who's going to be doing one or you know perhaps your children or husband or somebody's going to be doing one they've never done one before it might be worth them wearing something you know i don't know luminous green or <laughs> something that would stand out from <clears throat> from the crowd so is that when you're looking you'd easily be able to identify that it's actually them um you know that's kind of quite nice really for you as the onlooker so he also um he bought the video you know of his skydive he wasn't going to because obviously it was quite expensive and he kind of said oh you know i'm not buying it it's like really i think it was like 140 pounds or 100 no 120 i think to buy you know the video of the, like the gopro of his you know his um oh, shoot shoot jump um you know but i said to him well you know you might only do this once you know because there's no saying that you're gonna like it and you know wouldn't that just be terrible if you didn't then have that on film you know why why wouldn't you so he treated himself so i mean he does obviously earn you know he's doing his apprenticeship and um yeah he was just obviously being stingy but i think he's so pleased that he did get that because um you know like we said i mean that's your only kind of like record of that isn't it you know why wouldn't you try and get the the video of it so he did anyway and um yeah but anyway as soon as he got down to the ground obviously we kind of like went over as close as we could get i mean obviously you couldn't really get too too close because they're like in the field and there's a fence like between you but you know we got close-ish and um i thought he you know he might be feeling very green and very ugh, you know really sick oh he loved it he got down he was saying how great it was you know from the moment he he landed so um yeah he actually said he can't wait to do it again and his girlfriend who she's also a bit of a daredevil and um she had wanted to do it originally with him anyway um but you know like i say i mean it was his 18th birthday present and it you know it was quite a lot i think it was like 250 pounds um for his you know skydive but it was you know his 18th birthday but um yeah so i mean she couldn't do it because she just couldn't afford to to do it and um but the first thing she said as soon as he kind of landed on the ground she said oh i'm so gutted i really wish i'd done it now so yeah i think they were both quite excited and kind of feeling exhilarated to actually book and go and do another one so and my son, obviously, he's now like, oh, I'm going to do the one minute free fall. Um, yeah, so she'll have to save up even more money if she wants to do the one minute one. Because like I say, that was quite a bit more than the, you know, the 30 second one. But, but you know, I mean, that's a lovely experience, isn't it? And he's going to have that for the whole of his life, you know, to be able to say that he's done that. Even if he doesn't ever do another one, he's done that, you know, that once, which is awesome, you know. 
I mean, I have to say, watching the video back of of it, the free fall looked horrible because it was very like unstable, you know, and very erratic kind of movement. They were like all over the place, you know, and it was like, oh my goodness, that's making me feel sick to even watch it. Once they pulled the chute, it actually looked quite, I mean, calm. I'm not sure that's the right word, but you know, well, yeah, actually calm, um, you know, because it actually then just like they were just floating. It was kind of like suddenly, whew, you know, and then, yeah, they're just kind of floating down like at this wonderful pace. And oh, I mean, that looked amazing. And I even thought, oh, perhaps, perhaps I could do one. I don't get me wrong. I'm sure I couldn't, you know, my son said, oh, mum, you wouldn't, you know you would just not be able to do it. You'd be like hating every moment. And I'm sure he's absolutely right, to be honest. I'd get onto the plane. I mean, even the plane, I didn't like the look of because it was obviously tiny. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'd get onto the plane and then straight away be thinking, oh my goodness, what am I doing? And um, no doubt they'd open the chute or, you know, the side, open the side and I would just be like, no, I can't do it, I can't do it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he's probably right when he said, oh, mum, you, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't like it. I'm sure he's right. But it was just, you know, it did look exciting. And I thought, wow, you know, that would, you know, like, I mean, his first words when we said, what was it like? He just said, wow, nothing compares, you know. So I guess we all would like that kind of feeling, wouldn't we, of... Um, amazing kind of adrenaline and you know that yeah exhilaration but um yeah I'm sure he's absolutely right I'm sure I probably it would come to it and I would not want to actually get out of the plane I mean obviously because you're jumping with someone else you know you're kind of like sat on their lap and they are going to get you out of the plane whether you said you know if you said oh I can't do it perhaps they wouldn't go I don't know or maybe they have that conversation with you before and kind of say, look, you know, if, if you're really saying you don't want to do it, do you still want me to jump with you? I don't know. But, um, yeah. And then when I watched his, yeah, video, I just thought, oh, I definitely would not want to do the um, free falling for, like, even 30 seconds looked too long because it was very oh, seasick kind of feeling all over the place, you know. So, uh, yeah, I don't think that would be something I would enjoy very much but um yeah the actual kind of you know the actual like floating you know once the parachute had opened it looked amazing so uh, yeah let me know below if you've done one um I'd love to hear what your thoughts were I mean also there's a brilliant um interview with Will Smith on YouTube Oh, I don't know what it would come up as, to be honest. You know when suddenly things come up and, you know, you have no idea why why that came up. But anyway, it came up and um, he happened to be talking about doing a skydive. And, you know, he gave a very kind of honest account of how he'd been out with his mates and he was drunk and they were all kind of like, oh, let's get up tomorrow, let's do a skydive, you know. And he said then he got home and thought, oh, my goodness, did I just agree to do a skydive? What was I thinking? And told yourself, oh, it's all right, we were all drunk. No one's going to remember that in the morning. So um, he got up in the morning, you know, obviously hoping someone would have called him to say, oh, you know, what were we thinking yesterday? Anyway, nobody had. So, uh, yeah, he kind of had to drive down to the meeting place and, you know, we're still hoping that no one would be there. But, of course, they all were. And um, all of this. And then, you know, he obviously ended up having to do the jump. But he said how absolutely unbelievably amazing it was and I think he said that he came straight home and he got his son and took his son to go and do one I don't know whether he meant he took him to do one that day or whether do one you know like the next day I'm not really sure but yeah that's how much he loved it so um if you haven't seen that interview like I like I say I couldn't possibly tell you what that came up as you know on YouTube but it is on YouTube if you wanted to check it out. Right, now this one I'm debating, do I go for just the two? Because to be honest, I think that looks super nice actually. So yeah, I'm just going to do that and then I'm going to go for that white kind of gem actually. I think that looks really pretty. 
Okay. Okie dokie. Oh my goodness, my fingers are uh, very hot. <laughs> getting uh, burnt on here. Well, they're not really getting burnt, but you know. They're very hot, let's just say. I'm having to kind of touch very hot bits. Sorry, I'm just trying to get the glue off so that I'm not literally sticking things all over it. Okay, right. And then we're going to stick the gem on here. That looks lovely. Like that. Yeah, I mean, I just think things like this are wonderful to have on hand because uh, these are definitely a hoarding item for me. I just think they're so lovely that definitely, yeah, I struggle to use things like this because, you know, of course they all look so nice. It's like, oh no, I really like them all now. What, you know, can't bring myself to actually use them. So to do like a mass make of these is pretty pretty handy you know going going to be pretty handy anyway to have them on hand because I've used these a few times on covers and things like that and they do look gorgeous I have to say absolutely gorgeous on covers just wondering actually because this ribbon looks a little bit on the long side compared to the others so I'm just wondering whether I might prefer to put this under rather than over on this one like that might disguise the fact it's you know so much longer a little bit okay it's, yeah okay yeah anyway so that was our saturday and um i don't think i actually said in the end but we had to wait for about four and a half hours i think we were there and his actual obviously experience actually probably took um, i think it probably took about 20 minutes or 25 minutes by the time that he obviously like flew up you know and then jumped out and landed i think it was about 25 minutes so um yeah we had quite a sort of longish day and it was like an hour to get there so um yeah it was quite a kind of long day in this heat as well so you know but i mean it was fine we took a picnic with us and um you know it was nice and it was nice kind of spending a bit of time obviously with my my um daughter's girlfriend you know i mean obviously they've been together for a little while so that was quite nice just you know spending a bit of time with her and getting to know her a bit better she's a lovely girl um so yeah But, I mean, my daughter, obviously, she was quite bored. <laughs> I mean, we were all just incredibly hot, to be honest, because there wasn't really any shade. But, you know, it, it was good anyway. And then on Sunday, what did we do? Oh, on Sunday, yes, very exciting. I finally went to my first car boot sale since the lockdown has ended. So, um, yeah, that was really exciting. And actually, that was my highlight of the day yesterday was actually going to the car boot sale um and i went on my own i don't normally go on my own you know i've normally got somebody with me one of the children with me normally moaning oh gosh mum, how much longer are you going to be how much longer are you going to be um but yeah this time i went on my own i did have to pick my son up um you know so i, I said to him to walk around from the bus to meet me at the car boot sale because he'd been to a party the night before and then he stayed over at his um, girlfriend's mum and dad's house so he obviously had had a drink you know so he didn't have his car or anything so I was only kind of like five minutes walk from the bus station so I just said oh we'll walk around you know from the bus station to the car boot sale and I'll see you there so um, yeah he kind of met me there but I mean predominantly I was at the car boot sale in peace on my own it was bliss I have to say utter bliss and I bought myself a um, you know take out Costa from the drive through like on my way to the car boot sale I often bike to that car boot sale because it's quite close to my house but that's often a mistake because you know obviously if I buy anything much it's normally books you know which are quite heavy and then of course I'm stuck not being really able to transport them home 
So yesterday I was, yeah, a little bit wiser. I just, you know, drove. Um, so, yep, I went en route. I went to the drive through Costa, very lazy, and got myself a drive through Costa, had that, and, you know, did a leisurely look around the car boot sale. It was heaven. So, yep, that was my highlight of the day yesterday. Did I buy anything? Um, yeah, I got some good things. I got lots and lots of fabric. So I may try and, um, you know, show you guys the fabrics that I got. Uh, yeah, soon. I, I don't know whether I will have time, to be honest, to do a haul video. But I haven't done a haul video for ages, so that would be fun to do. Um, yeah, so I got lots of fabric. And what else did I get? Uh, oh, I got some other um, cigarette cards, like different ones. Um, yeah, actually, I got some different ones that I've never seen before of like vintage motor cars, you know, vintage, yeah, vintage cars. Um, now, I love, well, I mean, I love cars full stop, um, but I love those vintage cars. They are just so fun. I mean, I I have done a vintage car journal um, a couple of years ago. Um, so if you still watch my channel and you bought that journal, I, you know, I hope that you, um, you loved using it because I'm sure you've kind of finished using it now, but, um, yeah, I hope you loved using it for the time that you did. Um, yeah, anyway, so I managed to get these vintage car, um, sorry, I'm just debating whether this lace is not really kind of wide enough to do the collar effect. Um, yeah, I got these vintage car um cigarette cards which i hadn't ever seen before so they are really really fun so i'm going to have a play with those quite soon um what else what else what else uh, oh and i got an amazing 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 book and i have to say it was quite a lot of money so um yeah it kind of blew my budget right out of the water um but <laughs> It was just such a wonderful thing. I couldn't resist buying it. And um, I, I mean, I calling it a book, it's not really a book. It's a set of like hand drawn, um, uh, you know, like a fashion plate, that type of thing, but of um, street scenes and buildings, architecture basically of around London. I think it was concentrated on Westminster um, and the date was 1902 how amazing is that so of course I couldn't resist it because you know combination it was so old it obviously was architecture which I love architecture as you know and you know yeah the drawings and illustrations in you know what well, the the plates I mean they're kind of like fashion plates like I say so they are absolutely gorgeous so yeah, I would definitely, definitely, definitely be scanning those in and doing something with those. In fact, I just can't wait to actually do some stuff with them. But yeah, they'd probably be ages yet because I've got quite a bit on at the moment. Um, but yeah, can't wait to kind of play with those bits because, you know, it was such an awesome find. Ooh, don't know what to use here. Oh, I might just use the pearl actually. Um, yeah, such an awesome find. So, like I say, it did kind of um, blow the budget quite a lot, but I was so chuffed. And I said to the, you know, the man, oh my gosh, I cannot wait to get home and have a look through that and see them all. So, yeah, it's like, was even nicer when I looked back through it, you know, when I got home. Because sometimes I've, you know, I get home and think, oh gosh, what did I buy that for, you know? But yeah, definitely not that one. That one I was like, oh, my goodness this is actually even nicer even nicer now I'm home so yeah absolutely loved it but yes that was the first um, car boot sale that I've been to since the lockdown finished um, well I mean the lockdown's still not finished I know I've said this for the last few weeks as well during the mass making but I mean it's a, you know it's kind of still going on although and I've said this for the last few weeks I'm not really too sure what now is not open. I'm just going to do all of these actually in one hit now because um, otherwise I'm going to run out of time in this video to actually do all of the bits that I need to do.
uh yeah i'm not too sure what now is not open i mean obviously yeah there must be some things that aren't open i have to say everything that i kind of use is now open i'm pretty sure um yeah i can't really think of anything that's not open now that i would use obviously things like say places um like say where i go to yoga which again i've only actually made it to one yoga class actually indoors um which is a bit of a shame because i mean i love going and yeah i would have ideally been at least you know twice a week but yeah i just haven't managed it um uh, their places are very limited so i think previously they could have like say 36 people in a session i know that now they can only kind of have like say 12 people so whether or not that's the you know like restriction now you know that maybe is what they mean by lockdown and maybe that's going to finish in june i'm really not too sure um yeah i'm not really too sure to be honest um but yeah i mean i've i've had my jab and everything and you know i haven't had my second jab or anything but i've had my first jab um and pretty much everyone i know now has had at least their first jab um actually a lot of people i know have had their second one as well so you know it feels it feels like it kind of is safe but maybe i'm you know kidding myself because yeah like i say i mean definitely you know there's now talk about another variant um i can't remember what variant this one is but and it kind of threatening the chances of you know things reopening um but as i say i mean i kind of then thought well i'm not quite sure what's not reopened now anyway but like I say, unless they mean more, it's the like number restrictions and things like that. Oh, the other big news. Sorry, I'm really, um, really chatting today. The other big news is, of course, the cinemas have opened. And, you know, if you watch my channel, you'll know that we absolutely love the cinema. And, you know, of course, we've missed it so much during these lockdowns. I mean, even last year and they briefly reopened, didn't they? And we did go a couple of times, but of course there was nothing to watch because, you know, films haven't been being made. So, yeah, we really missed the cinema. So we've finally been. Um, my son and I went, and I'm sure I talked about this before, we went and watched The Conjuring, which obviously is a kind of horror type film, um, a couple of weeks ago. And, yeah, I mean, it was, it was okay. Um, but last week we went with my daughter. So, um, yeah, it was just my middle son and my daughter and myself. And we went and we watched Cruella. And that was with Emma Thompson and Emma Stone. Wow, what a brilliant film. We enjoyed it so much. Um, I didn't really know what to expect. Um, you know, I didn't really know what the concept of the film was. Other than it was kind of like how Cruella came to be you know, Cruella, I guess, um, you know, so I didn't really know kind of too much what to expect. Anyway, it was absolutely brilliant. Um, I mean, Emma Stone is great, isn't she? And wow, Emma Thompson, she was awesome. Absolutely awesome in it. So yeah, we really, really enjoyed that. And then this week, um, there is going to be a circus over the road to where we live. We live very near to like just an open park type area. It's not huge, but you know, it's, it's quite a nice park anyway. And um, yeah, it's big enough for them to have a circus on there. It's, it's not like a country park, if you know what I mean. It's, it's just like an open space, I guess. And um, yeah, anyway, they are having a circus there on, I think it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday or something. So we are going to try and go on hopefully Thursday because that's when it's cheap. You know, the first day they have like special offer for the tickets. So it's really nice and um, yeah, nice and cheap. So yeah, we're hoping to go on Thursday. Um, I think my eldest son and his girlfriend are, you know, have said that they will come. Um, well, he has said they will come. He will need to check with her that she, you know, A, would like to come and B, is free to come, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, he thinks that they would, you know, would like to come as well. So, uh, yeah, we're going to hopefully go to that because, and I'm sure I've talked about this as well on my channel another time, but I mean, we've been to a couple of circuses like over the last few years with the kids. Wow. They are so awesome. 
I mean, they're not like the circuses from when we were kids, you know, with the silly clowns and, you know, the um, animals or anything like that. I mean, they're an animal free zone now. And um, yeah, they're just absolutely full of the most talented, like, gymnasts, oops, gymnasts and acrobats, really. And um, yeah, I mean, the stuff that these people can do is so, so, so impressive. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to go to that on Thursday. Um, but they also, they've started, or they're starting this, um, what they're calling, like, boot camp over on that same field like further up on the field um i think it is starting this week as well so my sister um she told me about it and said her and her friend have signed up to do you know boot camp did i want to go with them so um i said yeah i i will go so i'm really trying to um you know do things and you know push myself a little bit more so, yeah, I'm going to go to that. So I've signed up because they had 10 classes for £10 as an introductory offer, which that's fantastic, isn't it? What brilliant value. So, yep, yeah, I've signed up to that. It starts on Thursday, which is the same night as the circus, obviously. Um, but I'm thinking it's on the same field. You know, <laughs> I mean, I anticipate I will get quite sweaty doing the um, boot camp. But... It will be outside so I mean you know hopefully it's at seven o'clock in the evening so I mean hopefully it will be a bit cooler then and I won't be getting quite so sweaty and then I will just you know nip along to the circus tent where hopefully you know I can get kind of um, you know the boys to take their sister and maybe my, my son's girlfriend obviously as well to take um, you know my daughter and then I will meet them at the circus because it finishes literally at the time when the circus you know when the circus showing starts so i mean hopefully it will all turn out just you know perfectly and i would just be maybe like a couple of minutes late um and looking the worst for wear following my workout but you know that's the plan i mean unless of course it's raining in which case let's face it i'm just not going to be that committed that i'm going to still go to the boot camp am i no, if there's rain, I just would not go. So then it would be the circus only. Um, yeah, so busy, busy week. And the other thing that we're going to try and see is um, there was a film called The Hitman's Bodyguard. It was with Samuel L. Jackson and Ryan Reynolds. I mean, how handsome is Ryan Reynolds? He is just lovely, isn't he? Um, so there is a film coming out called The Hitman's Bodyguard bodyguard's wife and that yeah i thought it said it was coming out on the 17th but actually it appears that it's i think even out now actually um so we're also going to try and see that one night this week um i've said this before but you know you can do this thing called meerkat movies where if you buy some insurance through like compare the market um you know comparison website uh, you can then get, you know, um, like two for one on cinema tickets. So we really like to take advantage of that. Um, so, yeah, hoping to go and watch that movie. I, you can only do the Meerkat movie thing for the cinema, you know, on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. But, I mean, that's fine. You know, that's more, more than enough choice. So, yeah, we're hoping that we're going to try and do that as well this week. So we've actually got quite a busy week going on, quite a bit planned. I think it just must make such a difference now that the weather's nice because um, I was getting a little bit worried that actually since lockdown, I was struggling to have any form of, um, you know, motivation or just desire to actually go anywhere or do anything. But... Yeah, it seems that actually, hopefully, it was just the weather really, you know, when it's just cold or, you know, raining or anything like that. I mean, of course, you know, you don't really want to be out and about, do you? But this week, because the weather is gorgeous and it's sunny and just, you know, lovely, I'm feeling much more kind of like wanting to get out and about and, you know, go and do some stuff. So, um, yep, yeah, tonight we're going straight down the beach from school. Um and we are meeting my sister there and her son, so my nephew. Um, he's the one who's had a sleepover, you know, with my daughter. So, 
she's really chuffed that obviously we're meeting them at the beach. Um, yeah, so we have a good week planned. Quite excited for our week ahead. You know, and then probably next week we will probably do nothing at all and it will seem really boring. Because that's how it seems to go, isn't it? You know, all or nothing. You have these really, really busy weeks and then it's like, oh, now we've got nothing. Oh, look at that combination. Um, yeah, so... Anyway, make the most of it, I think, this week, whilst we've got lots going on, so. Oh, nearly forgot. We also went for a walk down the beach last night. So I think we, I think we must have gone there at like seven, half six, something like that. Properly in the evening anyway. And, um, oh my gosh, it was so busy down there still. But it was also, it was so hot still. It was just the most gorgeous evening absolutely gorgeous so yeah it was really lovely um yeah we must have got home i think about half eight so yeah we must have gone down there about half six i think so and just did a little walk and you know then came home um yeah so that was just lovely as well because to be honest it had been so hot during the day you know you definitely wouldn't want to go for a walk during the day um you know, and everyone obviously had other things going on anyway, because, uh, you know, like I say, I mean, I I went to the car boot sale and had that lovely kind of bit of time in peace and just heaven. It was just lovely. Um, but yeah, it was really nice to go down the beach then last night. So yeah, when we go today, we're going to go at like, you know, I don't know, 3.30. I mean, when I say straight from school, we will obviously come home from the school and everyone will get changed into their swimming gear and all that. And um, yeah, then we'll kind of go there. But yeah, we'll probably leave our house at like, I don't know. I don't know, half three, four o'clock, something like that. So uh, yeah. But anyway, looking forward to that for later. Um, but today I'm just literally block filming for the whole day. I've done a couple of videos already. So yes, I should have apologised sooner, but I do apologise for the state of my hands. It's obviously because I've been doing back to back videos already this morning. Um, yeah. Um, right, let's just see. Uh, do I want to have... Oh, I can't decide. Mm, that's quite nice, isn't it? That's very rich looking, isn't it? Or should we have it? Oh, I think we'll go for the ivory, actually. I was thinking the grey, but no, nope, the ivory's kind of stole the show. Okay. So, yeah, and I mean, aside from, from all of that, been, you know, pretty busy, obviously. You know, I know I've talked about this before, but I mean, obviously, you know, my husband and I, we are, you know, in the process now of getting a divorce and um you know unfortunately i mean we've been married for you know a long time 21 years um would have been 22 years this year um you know but like all these things i mean as soon as money's involved of course you know it just brings out the worst in people and you know so life is not particularly great at the moment um you know and i'm having to spend an awful lot of time you know replying to silly emails and things um arguing basically about stupid things and um yeah i mean it's not really a great situation and i just want to say thank you so much to everyone for all your lovely kind wishes i really appreciate it and i know that loads of you have been in the same boat so you know please don't think i'm kind of trying to imply i'm the only person who's ever been through this or anything like that um, I guess I'm just kind of trying to say that, you know, again, you know, I really will do my best to keep up, um, you know, as normal kind of thing. Um, but it's taking its toll on my time, obviously, because, um, you know, obviously I'm now kind of conversing with a solicitor. You know, I've instructed a solicitor. So last week I spent quite a bit of time kind of prepping for my meeting having my meeting and then I have a huge form to fill in which I've filled in half the form so far but you know I've still got the other half to fill in um yeah and you know I'm having to spend a lot of time dealing with stupid things that my husband is kind of um well you know 
But it's just a shame that it's kind of ever come to this, really. But, you know, like I say, I mean, that's just what happens, isn't it? When, um, you know, when marriages break down and, you know, when obviously, I mean, obviously, you know, we have been married a long time. And so, of course, there's going to be a lot of things to be argued about, I guess. And, um, yeah. So anyway, we will kind of have to see what happens. But yeah, I just want to kind of put it out there that, you know, I really am going to do my best to, you know, continue as normal. But I am just kind of apologising in advance. I know I have done this already and kind of said this already. But, you know, there might just be times where, you know, that I just the videos are going to have to be shorter for a while and things like that because, um, you know, I just really don't have the amount of time due to all these other factors and of course I'm now you know doing like the sole person to do the you know the cooking the cleaning the you know the school runs the dropping the kids off here there and everywhere and you know everything basically so um yeah it's kind of like a little bit tough kind of trying to fit everything in but anyway I don't want to be um you know moaning on so yeah I'll be quiet but I just wanted to kind of put that out there again because I know I have mentioned it but anyone who didn't realize what's going on again just want to kind of just say you know please don't think I'm just neglecting my channel I would never do that um but you know it's just literally sometimes it's kind of like impossible due to these other things that you know unfortunately are you know required you know some of them like legally required you know right okay so those are the ones that we have made. I mean, they're just absolutely gorgeous, aren't they? I'm just going to bring in a journal cover just to kind of show you how it would look or how one of them would look. Um, I mean, let's just have a look, for instance, this one. I mean, how gorgeous is that on that cover? I'm going to just zoom out so you can see it better. Isn't it just stunning? I love these so much. And that's why I say, you know, they're a perfect thing for a mass make because actually I do find these are a bit on the hoardy side you know that I do want to just hoard them um but yeah anyway so I hope that you all like making them I hope that you um you know manage to make a ton and uh, not hoard them like I do <laughs> and thank you so much for watching have a great week everyone but hopefully see you guys tomorrow thanks then bye <laughs>